in the concept that the structure of space from that structure emerge all things and all things return to starts to give us a foundation for a new concept of energy, a new concept of gravity, a new concept of electromagnetism, and the forces of nature that comes together that produces our material world. And from that view, the material world does not look so material anymore. It starts to vacillate. It's, it's tough all of a sudden to pinpoint which part exactly is that little billiard ball you're telling me about. Right? That little atom you're thinking of. And when you start looking closer and closer, you find that that little atom not only exhibit immense energy dynamics, but as well is mostly space. It's mostly empty in our understanding of space. And so, where is that energy potential come from? Well, in quantum theory, causation is not addressed. That is, they'll tell you, oh, well, it all started in the Big Bang. <laughs> the Big Bang has become the god of science. If you don't know where it comes from, it came from the Big Bang. <laughs> and then if you ask, well, where did the Big Bang come from? That's voodoo. <laughs> now you gotta go to church. Don't ask me, just go to church. Right? Well, you know, my view is that Maybe we need to understand the source of that energy structure. And it became clear to me that the, that the natural world, I, I was very involved in climbing, I was very involved in skiing and mountaineering and so on. I observed the material world very closely and I could see that the material world was like a, was like a growth of the vacuum structure. That the, that the space-time manifold was emerging and producing very specific pattern structures in space that we call the material world, but that it emerged from space itself. That space was extending itself and looking back at itself in this... Consciously in dynamically coupled. And consciously dynamically <laughs> coupled, absolutely, as it carries information along a feedback loop of of information structure that define a very specific field geometry and I went about to find what is that field geometry and that <laughs> took me 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought and, and throughout this exploration I realized that the application of that, that understanding could have huge impact on society. That is, if we could find that fundamental pattern of creation, if we could find how the vacuum extends itself and feed back on itself, then we would have the key to the fundamental structure of space. And with that key, we would have access to literally an infinite amount of energy and curvature of space-time, which equates gravitational control, and so on. And so I started to study very intensely physics in its depth, and I found some of the difficulties that physicists had encountered. And I started, because of my approach, I, I, would, I was seeing past those difficulties into maybe a way to solve them. And this weekend I'm going to I'm going to present some material that I have not published yet, that I just finished, uh, which uh, solve equation that proves, literally, mathematically proves, that atoms, every single atom you're made of, which is billions and billions and trillions of atoms, each one of them is a mini black hole. Each one of them has an infinite potential singularity at its center, and it produces the effect that we call the electron cloud. And that's why it has all these unusual dynamics, like it spins for billions of years nonstop at near the speed of light, and 
all these things. But beyond the fact that this can be applied to technology, beyond the fact that all of a sudden physics would start regarding the world as a fractal structure of the space itself, beyond the fact that it would start regarding the material world at different scale, black hole, what I call black hole, white hole, or black hole, hole, H-O-L-E, W-H-O-L-E. Uh, Beyond that is the fact that realizing that this infinite nature is actually present in you, in every one of your atoms, and that because of that infinite nature, you are connected to all things in the universe at all time. That you're dependent on the structure of the vacuum for every billionth of a second that you exist. That you are actually exchanging information with all of the universe through every one of your atoms right now in this room in order to breathe, experience, assimilate the information, and feedback information that you are an active participant in the universe creation right now is, is the ultimate understanding, the ultimate message of this new energy technology. That is, the energy, the technology, and you are one. And you're... <laughs> and, and you're not one in an esoteric way that is not really palpable, that's not really able to be understood. It's one. You're one with everything in actual, physical, mathematical way that I can write an equation and tell you why. And that is necessary for your cognitive mind. And it's necessary for your survival. Because if we can write the equation, if we can make the mainstream scientific community understand the theoretical functions of it, then we stand a chance to be able to apply it in the most powerful way to our society and move on to a new level of existence, which I call the galactic society. A society that is no longer confined to the surface of their planet, that has infinite amount of goods, infinite amount of power. A society that lives in abundance instead of scarcity, you know, that has a concept that value is only based, the value is only based on the creativity of the one that has it in hand. And that, I believe, is the ultimate. This is what I visualize when I see our future. That's what I visualize when I look at the eyes of my three-year-old and when I think of his children. And I think we're just on the cusp. We're so close. And when I see what's going on in the media right now and what's going on in politics right now and all this, I see the old crumbling and the limitations crumbling and have no fear. The wealth is not going anywhere. It's just changing hands. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going from their hands to our hands. It's going from the concepts of scarcity, the concepts of deterioration, the concepts of entropy, to the concepts of centropy, overunity, uh, abundance, and ultimately the thriving of our society and our world. And so in this, I'm glad to be with you. I'm glad to be part of this. I'm honored to be part of this. And I want to encourage you to, um, you know, to expand your horizon. Don't be afraid of advanced engineering or advanced physics and all this, because I tell you, if it's right, 
it's really simple. And it's, you can understand it and don't be afraid to understand it. Doesn't matter how old or young, whatever, with your background, you can understand it. And because it is what fundamentally you're made of. And it is fundamentally at your heart, at the heart of your existence, and you will recognize it. So thank you so much for having me.